G'day folks, Steve from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's episode, we're gonna have a little update on what we've been up to with the electric Land Rover. Yes, it is still going. Um, and talk you through the bits and pieces that are going into the project. So, we've got some batteries, John. Talk us through what these are. Uh, Tesla modular batteries with liquid cooling. These hoses are just to stop it from leaking. Normally you'd run the input down one side and the output teed up off the out other side and that goes through these funny gold colored pipes are actually aluminium it takes the heat away from the battery so five modules this will give us uh, 120 ish volts 125 volts and okay range and if we want to do anything more we get another five and stick them in double keep the same voltage but double the range <laughs> These are 5.3 kilowatts each. So it's not a huge amount in the big scheme of things. You'd have at least 10 of these normally in a standard Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, we've only got five. That'll do us for the moment. We've got custom made, well, you buy these off the shelf aftermarket bus it's bars for the other end. It. Um, and we'll have them in a stack like this in a box under the bonnet. And that'll be our high voltage pack. It'll have cooling lines the high voltage connections, and we'll add in there the battery management electrics, because there's a lot of complicated wires go to these, little wires, and we'll add the main contactor to isolate the battery from the rest of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And this one is the um, charger, so that's the, um, that's a 6.6 .6 kilowatt um, charger, which is more than I need, but anyway, that's what was available. Um, so that takes the 240 volt and converts it to um, the voltage to, to run to charge the batteries. So you're forever can so you're taking AC, you're converting it to DC to charge the batteries, and then from the batteries, the DC 120 volts gets converted to 12 volts DC to run your um, 12 volt battery and, and your lighting system and all that mm -hmm. sort of regular stuff, and then. The 120 volt DC also goes to the inverter motor controller, which converts it back to AC, 120 volts AC, which runs the motor. Um, and it also controls the amount of the current it's feeding to the motor to, so that you can control your speed. And all those other things, and your regen and stuff like that. Yeah. And so in there somewhere, is there a, a safety to cut that power between the... Yeah, so we'll need we'll need to build in. That's one of the things we need to look at today is the wire, uh, building a wiring diagram and building um, a safety fuse, like whether we put a pyro fuse in, yeah, um, and also a switch, a, a cutoff like switch somewhere. So, yeah. So it doesn't turn into a rocket all of a sudden. <laughs> It'll be fun to watch. Hope I'm there when it happens, yeah. so I can video it. <laughs> I burn John's head now. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon this is a yeah, this is a DC to DC converter. So it takes the um, 120 volt DC, converts it down to 12 volt to run all the 12 volt system, like oh, the okay. lighting and the yep. um, all your regular stuff. Mirror ball. Is it what to do with a knife? Just here, mate. <laughs> and so, Pete, just about budget and stuff. Is it is it frightening? Is it frightening? Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit frightening. Um, we're, uh, we're, uh, this lot was uh, over fourteen thousand mm -hmm. uh, so dollars. So the batteries are a huge expense. Um, if you were paying for all the labour, yep. um, yeah, it become very expensive very quickly. What do you reckon the total budget at the end point will be as a sort of beer coaster estimate? Uh, look, um, I'd like to keep it under 50. Mm -hmm. um, I think I will keep it under 50. Yeah. But if I was paying you and Steve and um, Warwick, yeah. I wouldn't be. So. Well, there you go. This is your um, your motor in. This is our motor in. So we've um, connected to the clutch. Um, we shaved a bit off the flywheel. We probably could have shaved more, but we'll see how we go. Um, so we're still using the original transmission, still using the transfer box, still using the high and low. So all of the uh, Land Rover gearbox is still behind this. Yep. Um, this replaces the, the petrol engine. 
And so talk us, what's this motor? So this is a, a AC net gain Hyper 9, um, 120 volts, producing up to about 100 kilowatts, um, and which we probably we won't be running at that. Yeah. Lot, but um, yeah, considerably more than the than the original um, than the original four cylinder 2.25. 2 yeah. Um, and uh, where did this come from? This is, uh, we bought this new, so this came from um, Conrad in Jitterbar and I bought that through, um, who's, who's done a few Volkswagen conversions and yep. sells, sells parts. Um, so this and the motor controller that comes with it, uh, which is a motor controller inverter, yep. it's just running on AC, um, and this will also do regen, so. Um, cool. Yeah. And the plan is that battery pack will sit above this? The plan is, Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, those battery packs, if you can see them there, will just slot here. In their the little box. Either crossways or lengthways, we haven't really decided yet. Um, in, a, in a box, yeah, to, to, that we need to have for um, legal requirements. Uh -huh. um, is that like a big fireproof box or something? Or? Yeah, crash proof. It's got to put up a certain amount of Gs. And, um, so, yeah. Fireproof and crash proof. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you go back here, original gearbox that Steve finally got back together. You got PTO on the back. But you don't really need the gears. Well, um, so Don Inkle in, in um, Victoria, he's running like, um, third, he puts it in third gear for most driving. Mm -hmm. Um, puts it in, I think he goes into fourth gear for like freeway to get it up to sort of 90 k's an hour or whatever. Yeah. And second gear off road. Mm -hmm. um, so you're still using the gearbox, but you're not changing gears on the fly so much. Yeah. Well, and I not at all. guess you've got the access to the high low range thing as you've well. You've got access to high low range, and you've got um, because it's a series two, we've got um, selectable two wheel drive and four wheel drive range, which will reduce. You know, if we have yeah. permanent four wheel drive like an old Series One, it's going to reduce your efficiency rather yeah, dramatically. Yeah, sure. I would have thought. Although it might increase your regen as well. I don't know. Although the overrun would probably, you'd probably lose your front yeah. wheel regen. Um, yeah. So, like all um, selectable four wheel drives, you get less. You, they're more efficient, and efficiency is an issue because we're because of battery size. Yeah. Like I said, we're, we're hoping for 80 k's out of out of what we've got. So. Yeah. And uh, your time frame for? Oh, I'd like to have it on the road by Christmas. But oh, really? Liking and doing are two different things. I, look, yeah. I really don't know. we will imagine we'll get more of an idea as we um, unpack all this stuff and yeah. um, draw up a diagram and figure out what tasks are ahead of us. So the next job is kind of, I guess, a big wiring harness of some description? Big wiring harness, yeah. A bit of design to figure out where, where the um, charge is going to go, where yeah. the DC to DC converter is going to go. Some of that can probably go under the seat. Um, Luckily, other people have done this already, so we can look at Jaunt, we can look at that um, Series 1 that was for sale in on eBay last month. Where was um, that? The UK or something? That was in the UK, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, a lot of photos there, so we can see what they did for their layout. And they've, mm -hmm. they've all, all of those projects have used Hyper 9 motors and oh, okay. similar setups. So we're not we're not um, reinventing the wheel entirely. And Dave down there at um, Jaunt is using the same motor? Dave has used this motor, yeah, in, yeah. in, in several projects. So. Cool. Yeah. So you're going to pad this? So, yes, this is just a loose bit of metal, and we'll put some rubber all the way around the motor and make it squish up against this top bar. And it doesn't need much to hold it in, it's not like an internal combustion engine. Yeah. Well, I guess that the gearbox is. Gearbox has some mounts on it. It mounts. just needs to stop the weight dropping at the front. It'll have torque wanting to spin it, yeah. but it won't have any of that reciprocating piston mass vibration. Yeah. You're gonna gusset this or anything? The plan is to gusset it, but I think it's actually overkill as is, but we'll really? gusset it. Can't go past the jolly gusset. <laughs> as the Elizabethan said in the Renaissance. So we need a crush collar in there. It's already got them because these are the bolts that hold the original brackets oh, of on. Of course, yeah. They go all the way through. Our design is a little remiss 
this bar misses the steering knuckle. Yeah. But it blocks one of the holes. So that hole is got a nut welded on on the inside. Right. There you go. So, this is the charge port installed where the standard filler nozzle is. Does it take diesel or unleaded? <laughs> Depends what your electrons are. Yeah. And then the cables for it come down here where the fuel line would be. And into that box. And would go into the high voltage charge box to charge the main traction battery. Mm -hmm. It's a nice fit. It's a fantastic fit, just perfect. The if holes aligned, did they? The holes for the bolts aligned. We had to make a little bit of a cutout because on the back of this there's a whole bunch of weird things for the LED lights that come up. Um, and there's a drain hose from it. Pretty sexy. Oh. Bit of pipe. So there's a drain hose at the base there as well that has to be allowed to trickle water out if there's any in there. Okay. Cool. So moving forward, that, that seat box will go back in with all the goodies in it. The yeah, new... we'll put the seat box in. We'll start here with the high voltage wiring and then we'll have to run some orange conduit up to the engine bay area. And yeah. the engine bay area, the motor is fully installed. Yeah, it's got we'll go, right. bolted in, ready to go. And what else have you been working on? Look at that, a sexy box. So the standard Land Rover would have a box like this made out of thin sheet metal under the passenger side where the 12 volt battery might go. Yeah. Um, it's corroded out and useless, so we're getting rid of it. Plus, we're gonna build another box on, this is under the driver's side. This is out of three mil aluminium sheet, bent up. Um, this will have high voltage stuff in it. So at the back here will be the charge cable from the petrol filler spout. Mm -hmm. And it'll come in and that'll feed the charger for the high voltage system so ac voltage coming in here high voltage orange dc high voltage orange going out to the battery pack um, there's a controller here data bus and at the back here we have the dc to dc converter it takes the high voltage battery pack in and puts out 12 volts to keep the 12 volt lead acid battery yeah, yeah. happy and then over here is the traditional spot for the passenger side battery there would normally be a little recess coming down here to take a big truck battery in it this is just the upside down seat box this is the upside down seat box and i've again folded up a bit of three millimeter aluminium and we're just going to solid rivet it in to make a battery box i may recess a battery cradle here or we might use a smaller 12 volt battery because we don't need a lot of in the 12 volt battery yeah and it can trickle charge from the uh, from the main thing from the yep. mains. Yep. Uh, so we've finished installing the clutch slave cylinder and all the linkages. So that's a bit of an update. We weren't going to put a clutch in, but now we decided to. Yeah, the easier way to get the adapter plate is to get it to a bolt onto the bell housing of the motor. Yeah. And um, that just means you probably need to keep the clutch. You don't need the clutch to use it or anything. But the bits are there, so why not put it in? So the script again, hang on. Oh, you're going to say, G'day folks, Jeff from Vintage Restorations Australia here. In today's episode, we're going to talk you through an update on the electric Land Rover project. Go. G'day, Jeff from Vintage Restorations. G'day folks. G'day folks. Oh, okay. G'day folks, uh, Jeff from Vintage Restorations Australia. Today we're going to talk you through an update and uh, see how we go from there. Up your date. That's it. <laughs>